as predicted right here by our own Michael Scott Holly, uh, the Suns knocked off the Lakers. And uh, we are unpacking uh, the unsuccessful championship defense of the Lakers. A lot of questions going into all, to the offseason. One of them is not LeBron James, least of my concerns. Should be the least of everybody's concerns. Um, Karin Phillips from Deadspin is here, and I was concerned that when we saw him, he was going to come in with his chest out because if anybody could pull that off, it is Karin J. Phillips. Uh, as we say, Ben Vereen can flow in that, but like the rest of us, that, that's a Karin look is, are you, come on, man. Like you gotta, you gotta, you come on, you pull it, you do it every now and then, on, right? Man. Right? I know but, you do. But, y'all telling too many secrets here. All right. It's, 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 you know, it's still in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, let's. Let's, we haven't got the happy hour yet, guys. Come on now. Let's. let's I'm gonna let's tell you this though. Fair hour. enough. It's happy hour Mike. somewhere. Hey, it's Mike. happy hour somewhere. You know what I'm gonna do though? Yeah. Mike, if uh, if the Brooklyn Nets lose in the second round, I'm coming out. I'm coming out shirtless, shirtless on brother from another. You get to see all this. Don't raise the stakes. I'm hiding it. Please don't raise the stakes. I'm hiding it here. Please don't raise the raise the stakes. Because you know I'm trying um, not to flex on everybody. I think I think we'll be safe. Was, I, I think we'll be safe okay. because okay, good. I don't I don't I don't believe <laughs> the Bucks are coming out of that series at all. So I think well, we, we're all. But well, we were gonna go to the Lakers. We were gonna go to the Lakers, but since we on that, just just stay there. Go ahead. So expound on that, please. Because um, look, Miami just ran out of gas, and I, when I look at this Milwaukee Bucks team, there are two still glaring issues there that they haven't saw one Bud is still the coach and two Giannis <laughs> didn't get better or makes anyone better so if I'm Steve Nash this is what we do we go grab Claxton and if Jeff Green is healthy and he can come back or whatever service so big or if Blake Griffin can give us six fouls every night this is what we're going to do we're going to play Giannis straight up all game and we're going to defend the hell out of everybody else on that floor and we're going to let Giannis average 45 for the series, and we're going to win in five. Because we're going to if – if I'm the Brooklyn Nets, we're watching tapes of the 4 finals and watching what the Pistons did to the Lakers and say, oh, all they did was let Shaq go ham the whole series and shut down everybody else. And that's what you do with Giannis because he can't uh, create for anyone. He doesn't make anybody's job easier, and no one on that roster can create their own shot. That entire offense is predicated off Giannis. Oh my the God! Oh, Karen, 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 and kick, and, and and kick so out three. Much slander. Oh, okay. so, wait, Drew Holiday could get his own shot. Middleton can get his own shot. And, and I have never. And, like, how does a two-time MVP listen? How does a two? I just answer me this question. How does a two-time MVP not make yeah, anybody? Answer better? this. Like that yeah. dude flies in yeah. the face of the definition yeah. of, 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 the, of the of the status. Because Come he's on. the because he's the MVP of the regular season. The Bucks are one of those teams that are always good when it doesn't matter, but when it does matter, they aren't. Which is why I want to tie into what you said earlier about Mike, uh, about Rob Plink and the Lakers, about how good of a haul he did in his offseason. No, he didn't. I don't understand why LeBron and everyone else has belief in Rob Palinka. Because I'm like, what did Rob Palinka do? Because when I saw the Lakers in the playoffs, everything that they were missing that they needed they had last year and let go and that haul he brought in last year like what did he do rondo was looking for a job uh, um montrez hell okay that was a good move but he was pissed off at the clippers so he was looking to get out of there uh mark gasol okay, okay cool but even the haul he brought in the year before with danny green and all those guys danny green only came to the sure. lakers because Kawhi left toronto and he was like i'm going to make my decision based off him if we look at all the significant pieces that they've added, Dwight Howard turned out great, right? Nobody wanted him. JaVale McGee was just floating around. All of the pieces the Lakers have had the last couple of years that have made them good in a regular season or the postseason last year when they won it all fell into their laps. What actual work has Rob Plinka oh, done oh, to get sure. guys? Because so, okay. as, Holly, as Holly said, Rich Paul brought Anthony Davis to the Lakers, not Rob Okay, Plinka. no, listen. Okay, you, you, fo you, fo you focus on the wrong detail. I'm I'm not Rob Polinka's agent. I'm not the former agent's agent. Okay, like I'm not. This wasn't a, a Rob Polinka. I'm talking about the guy whose job it is to improve the roster ostensibly. Rich Paul, maybe unofficially, unofficially, but officially, it is Rob Polinka's job. My point was simply that I think you would agree with this. 
Because if, if, if you don't and you didn't, you're in a vast minority, and that's not. Listen, you, so you see things some people don't. Karen Phillips, I'm <laughs> saying like at the beginning of the season, they were universally considered to have upgraded by bringing in specifically Dennis Schroeder and Montrez right. Harrell, not to yeah. mention Marcus Gasol. They were all seen as upgrades from the role players. It didn't play out that way. But did you did you not think they were upgrades at the time when they acquired those players? Oh yeah, like I remember the days when like the news were breaking on Twitter, and I was oh okay, oh okay, yeah, this looked good. But I remember a couple weeks after, I kept thinking about it, and I was like, I've never seen Wesley Matthews hit a shot that mattered when you needed him to. Just like last night when that run was coming, and he had that look in the corner that would have cut it under single digits, and I was like, oh, that's off because Wesley Matthews never make that shot. Um, Marcus saw, and I was like, okay, the only way this works is if they put him at the high post and they run a high low with him, Anthony Davis, because Mark and saw can facilitate. He can set screens. Well, and he can uh, pick and pop and shoot three. They didn't do that all year, which I never understood. And Schroeder, I thought Schroeder was going to work because I was like, listen, he's a great backup point guard since you lost Rondo since LeBron plays the point. And then the season started and Schroeder started. And I was like, so who's going to run the offense when they're both on the floor? Alice Caruso. I don't understand. I believe in some parts they had all the right pieces. I don't think they necessarily use those pieces the right way. And as we all know, in the postseason, that's when you get exposed. And I don't know what the hell Bogle was doing this series because I have never seen a series flip dramatically or as quickly as this did. A week ago, we were laughing at Jay Crowder and Drummond was on the bench mimicking and the Lakers about to steamroll yeah. the lead. Tony Braxton came up and sang seven whole days, and seven whole days later, the Lakers were a joke and getting run out the gym. What, and what Devin answer, Booker was, up, was the cussing out the rock. Anthony Davis, though. But the answer yeah, is easy Anthony but, Davis. Like, I mean, if, if, lot, if, if, if maybe Vogel could have done a better Anthony job Davis. of adjusting. No, no question. But they were up 2-1 with those same pieces and those same shortcomings. They had the best defense in the league, and they were up 2-1 looking like they were going to run away with this series when Anthony Davis was going for 30. He gets hurt and they don't win again. So I, I mean, I, it's to, it's not all about Anthony Davis's injury, but that's where it's got to yeah. start and everything kind of flew up and close the from there. Thing that can, the thing that concerned me the most, if, if, if you're a Lakers fan, because I saw this even before Davis got hurt and he was putting up numbers like you just said, every time they went to Phoenix, they look shell shocked. Like they had never been in the atmosphere like that before. It's like they forgot how to play defense and they forgot how to punch back, except for that. Uh, what was that game four? Um, but I, I was always confused about how they were not prepared for Phoenix's first quarter punches. It happened last night, it happened in game five. And I just kept looking around to like what happened. In the prep or in the game prep for them not to be prepared for this team to punch first when that team had been punching first the whole series. Well, Speaking look, of Michael, uh, eventually I'm going to get remind, you. remind me to ask you about punching later on, Karen. Sorry, Michael. Just remind me. Don't <laughs> don't let me let you leave. I will come back to the subject of punching in a moment. But go ahead, Michael. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm not even going to get into I'm not going to get into all the crazy stuff you said about the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm just like I'm, I'm I feel some kind of way about. It. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not gonna get into it because you know, look, it's just not worth it right now. But I do want to ask you about LeBron in the future. We were talking about it before he came on. Is it the beginning of the end? What can you expect at age 37? What do you expect from LeBron uh, going into next season? I don't expect anything different from LeBron because we've never seen anything different from him. I actually think the way the game is played now, it actually extends his career. This is a guy who's turned into, as you all were talking about, one of the best shooters on that team. Because if you look at the Lakers, I figured out what y'all were trying to say. The Lakers were a team full of guys who can shoot, but they didn't have any shooters. And that was a big problem for them. Um, If LeBron keeps improving on his three-pointer, listen, he can extend his career doing that. He is a guy that you can run offense through at the high post because of his IQ and his passing ability. Um, And if he was to add a post game, uh, enhance that even more, even though when you get old, you don't feel like banging like that anymore. There are still ways that you can utilize him on the floor where he can be very effective, where he doesn't necessarily have to carry the load and carry a team 
like he did in the past, but he can still play a lot more years like that. The issues, like you all say, is with Anthony Davis because in the bubble, I don't know if y'all remember, outside of a couple games, option one was still LeBron James in the bubble when that was he was supposed to be option two. And we came into the season, LeBron James was still option one. And last night he was. And before AD got banged up early in the season, LeBron was still option one. At what point does Anthony Davis take it upon himself to take that next step to when he is the best player and the go-to guy on this team? Because that's what LeBron needs. He's always had sidekicks, like you guys said, in Miami, then back in Cleveland. And now here now, he's at that point uh, in his career where he needs to be 1B and not 1A. And if Anthony Davis can't be 1A, mm. then you got to figure out what to do very, very quickly because this ain't going to go right. And it's going to keep being like it was last night. I don't know that a guy like LeBron James is built to be a 1B. I'm not sure. I, I don't think he's there yet. I, I, don't, I don't know somebody who dominates the ball as much as he does and should would look to somebody to be 1B. Now, maybe in certain situations, or 1A, excuse me, in certain situations. I mean, obviously, you know, Anthony had his L.A. moment last year, his Kobe moment where he hit the game-winning shot. I think it was against Denver, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure if LeBron is, is at the stage yet where he's ready to take a step back. I mean, I could see, I could see somebody being more of a sidekick, you know what I mean, and, and taking on more of the load. But I think you pointed it out earlier. It's really more about when he goes to the bench. You know, like somebody but, else but to that was the thing, facilitate the, the offense. That was the thing I enjoyed so much about them last year in the bubble with Rondo. That remember whenever they have that rock, mm. that lineup with him and Rondo on the floor together. That was the first time yeah. in LeBron James's life where he was playing with a point guard that was just as smart or smarter than him. And I remember those series, right. a couple stretches where the Heat tried to play a two-three zone. And you just saw LeBron and Rondo looking at each other like, oh, we know exactly what to do and how to, like, dissect this. And for the first time in his career, it was like, oh, I'm finally playing with somebody who sees the same things that I see, and I don't have to say anything or explain anything. Um, so either if he can't be a 1B, he needs to be a 1A, he needs someone just as smart as he's been. And Rondo has been the only guy he's that. ever played yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, but but don't forget about your, your punching comment you want to bring up. Yeah, you go ahead, punch. I, I, oh, I see the floor. I see the you floor to... to the senator from Connecticut. Go ahead. No, no, no. It was really just a. It was just a reference to uh, one of your pieces. Um, by the way, you crank out content like Master P back in the day, bro. Like I used to go to Circus. <laughs> no and limit records. No limit records. Yeah, you crank out. You crank out an album every other day, man. Um, no, but um, it, you know this, this, the story of these playoffs. You know, you mentioned the wild swings, the L.A. stories in particular, you know, both L.A. teams in control, both of them on the ropes, then they're in control. Now, now one's eliminated, the other's on the brink of being eliminated. But the story of these playoffs has really been insults and injuries. And by insults, I'm talking about that we've gone a few days now without any kind of uh, unfortunate fan interaction mm -hmm. with the players. Uh, one of the pieces you wrote, and I, less, I thought I was being extreme. I was talking, I was calling for a goon squad of fans. <laughs> To police one another instead of like, you know, like if you're in Boston and you feel some kind of way because people think your fan base is racist, then come to your own defense and put hands on these people that's acting out of pocket, you know, like have, have basically like some citizens arrest type stuff going on. But you went a step further. You want the players to be able to put hands on them. <laughs> like, how's that gonna work? <laughs> it's not like a plan. It just needs to happen once. That's all. All we need okay. is once. Because every every generation needs their example. I'm old enough to where I'm like, oh no, uh, Mad Max going into the stand was my example. This the generation after me, they got malice at the palace. This generation, yeah. they ain't seen nobody get slapped or punched yet. That's what we need. Somebody needs to get choked mm. out very quickly, and then everybody will calm down. Especially in this social one media, one extinction level event. Yeah. Especially in this <laughs> social <laughs> media, Twitter, IG generation that believes they can just say anything to say any, they can say anything to, to anybody yeah. because they hide behind a screen name. And now you in the arena and you've been at home all year. You have to watch these players kneel and you all pissed off at them. And now you just popping off everybody. Okay, 
just let one of them, let let one fan get choked out. Everybody's gonna calm back <laughs> down, and sit down, and we will be okay. Oh, uh, what was that? I don't know. Well, what it depends on how the lawsuit like? plays out. Because they get if they get twelve million dollars for uh, their sprained eye, uh, then now <laughs> maybe more people might decide to look to if, push if, the envelope. What is it, Mike? If I'm Chris Paul and I'm the president of the Players Association, we're going to take two percent out of everyone's check. And put it into a pool <laughs> so that if you get fined, we got the money for you. It's going to be called um, uh, for chokeouts. Look, this is the, this is the chokeout account. The chokeout fund. First person to choke somebody out, we will take care of your fees and fines. There you go. Take and we're going to give you a we're going to give you a little money? bit on the top for taking one for the whole yeah. league. The chokeout. Right. Like, I'm trying to remember. Up? I know you know this, Mike Smith. Who was the cat? Was it a uh, Mike Curtis for, with the uh, oh, yeah, Mike Curtis linebacker who took out the fan the like, Colts. Yeah, Baltimore Colts. Took out yeah, the 32. Fan. yeah, yeah, like yeah, and we've seen that. Yeah, like, football, that's the previous generation. See, you said Mad Max. See, that's, that's the different. previous generation. Yeah. Yeah, well, you see him at, at, at football. You go on on the football field and they start tackling you or they just like give you like a little shiver. That's messed up. And I think there was a Super Bowl. It was actually the same Super Bowl with the wardrobe malfunction. Somebody ran on the field, and uh, I think Matt Chatham of the Patriots kind of went after somebody. Mm. So, hey, hey you, you, you're on to something, Karin. Look, you see somebody 6'8", 260 pounds coming your way. Hit him with that Jermaine hey, O'Neal. Hey, listen, might... listen, listen, I'm not that, that Jermaine promoting... O'Neal haymaker. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> not. I'm not promoting violence. But what I am saying through history, I think you have are multiple examples Just of violence for, for, working cause, for a good for the greater for good. good. You know, if listen, no, I think, right. no, I think, right. the, the Bible no, is the most the definition. in human history. It is full of wars and violence. David and Goliath. This is violence. the definition of promoting violence, but we understand. Listen. I'm here for the greater good. I just want everyone to enjoy themselves yeah. at the game. I want the players to be able to get on the court and show us their talents. I want us to wear a mask and everyone be safe. Ashe, namaste. Peace and love. Yeah. No, Ashe, no listen, namaste. like uh, like there the dude that's the, like the dude that stole the TV in good time says. Sometimes you got to do the wrong thing for the right reasons. Yo, uh, before we let you go, uh, you were quite excited about uh, a certain sequel. That is uh, that is in production. I was noticing on Twitter you got a uh, you got pretty excited about a, a certain classic film that oh, is, uh, being, begins filming in August, I believe. <laughs> yeah, like I I'm, I just as I continue to get to know you more and more with every appearance here on Brother from Another, I, is, is Wedding Crashes is way up there for you, huh? This is a classic, like, Mom Meatloaf. No doubt. <laughs> what what is she doing up there? I never know what I she's know, doing. I never know what she's doing. <laughs> Now, exactly. now. Me and you. More, more for me and you. <laughs> no, a lot of quotables in that. Absolutely. A hell of a lot of quotables in that movie. Oh, man. Well, hey, you full of quotables, brother. Uh, keep up the great work. Keep killing it on Deathspin. Obviously, I'm follow my man on Twitter. Uh, Karen Phillips, we'll see you next time, bro. Appreciate the knowledge. See y'all. Be good. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.